my dear friends, you asked me to record this video for a long time. So finally today, Russian names will be explained. Uh, we're going to cover uh, subjects like male and female names, how they are formed and so on. Patronymics, the thing that bothers almost everyone. Uh, is it still valid? Is it something that we use every day? What is it? How to use it? We cover all that. Uh, then we talk about nicknames. It's a nightmare for everybody who likes to read classic Russian literature. Uh, so why the same name can be used in 20 different ways. Is it the same person or what's going on? So nicknames. Uh, what happens to names after marriage? Is it uh, that the woman changes her last name and how exactly it works? Some traditional Russian names and uh, some unusual, not too crazy, but some names that are not very common. Uh, do Russian names have meanings like in English or in um, I don't know. I know in India, a lot of names, they have their meaning, their actual words. So do we have this in Russia? I called it same names. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> it's a name uh, that works both for boys and girls. So one name can be used both ways. Um, actually, you sent me these questions. It's not that I got them from my head. So if you have more questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them later. Here we go. And we start with male names. Of course, everybody knows this person, Vladimir Putin. And in English, of course, he is called Vladimir Putin. But here we do have this patronymic. However, let's leave it alone for now. We're going to talk about it a little later. So we have first name Vladimir, Vladimir. By the way, don't forget that this is the name that is 100% chance pronounced wrong in English. It's not Vladimir, no. In Russian, we stress E, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. Another very common mistake uh, would be... Uh, Boris. Where is it? Let's put it somewhere. Somewhere here. Boris. Uh, in English, for some reason, a lot of people say Boris. I'm sure you uh, know the Russian language channel, Life of Boris. But actually, the name is Boris. Boris. So these are the names Vladimir, Boris, that are very easily confused. Another one is the name Yegor. Yegor. So in English, I know uh, they spell it a lot like that and pronounce it like Igor. It's not correct because Yegor and uh, Igor, they are two different names. So this is Igor. E is stressed. This is the name Yegor, O is stressed, Yegor, Igor. So it's two, two different names. Okay, so male names usually end on a consonant. Remember when we talked about genders in Russian, uh, genders of nouns in Russian words, you remember that masculine nouns also end on a consonant most of the times. So same here, Vladimir, and there is nothing in the ending. The same with the last name, Putin. Um, so this would be the common ending for a Russian last name. Remember, Yuri Gagarin. In means a male last name. Another very, very common ending would be Ov. Of. And it's peculiar that in English, uh, for some reason, it's replaced with, oops, with uh, off. You know, like off double uh, double f off. That's that's strange. Off. 
like Romanov. We're going to talk about this last name later, Romanov. Uh, but actually, it is of Chekhov, Bulgakov. Who else? A lot of Russian names and on off. And uh, um, so I guess no questions here. Consonants mostly. Some exceptions uh, there will be. There will be. Like, let's say Nikita. Nikita. For example, Nikita Khrushchev, famous Soviet leader. Nikita Khrushchev. So some names would end on a uh, uh, vowel. By the way, it's funny that uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a very popular uh, series. Her name was Nikita. Nikita. In Russian, it's a male name. Male name. As for the female names, basically, I got rid of the patronymics here just not to distract you. So. Uh, they would normally end on a vowel, a or ya. Polina, Irina, Daria, Olga, Natalia, Yekaterina, Alexandra, Marina, Anna. So you see, they all end on a. Today, it's pretty common to um, borrow some names like Nicole, Nicole. It's kind of fashionable and everything, but it's a foreign name and it's not very popular to, to use it. So most common names would end on A or Ya. Last name, remember Putin and actually Yuri Gagarin first man in space. Yes, Yuri Gagarin. So it's literally the same last name, but to make it feminine, if you know it's a woman, we add a Gagarina, Gagarina. Or for example, um, let's, uh, let's say my last name, Molchanova, Molchanova. Uh, it's not even my last name, but we'll talk about it when we talk about changing the names of uh, after marriage. So the male version would be Malchanov. If you want to make it a woman's name, Malchanova. So for people from Slavic countries, it, it's obvious it works the same way. For English speaking or like other from other countries, Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty tricky, pretty tricky. What we do with those last names? Let's look at this Natasha. Natasha here, by the way, when we come to those nicknames, why is she Natalia instead of Natasha? Why is she Romanova instead of Romanov, right? So uh, we will talk about nicknames soon. Um, so what to do, what to do with the last names when it comes to uh, cases, we do change the endings like in any other words. Let's say Malchanova, but about Malchanova, we would use the prepositional case ending, Amalchanovoy, da? Amalchanovoy, or K Malchanovay, Za Malchanovay, and so on. So with cases, we do change them. However, Russia is a multinational country, and uh, a lot of people from different Slavic countries were mixed in together. So it's pretty common to have the endings from other countries, like each, uh, from Poland, from Ukraine. So sometimes at the ending, you will see endings like yuk or each and some other ones. Uh, these uh, usually, uh, trend let, let me find an example. For example, uh, somebody actually in the comments used uh, their last name Maskaluk, Maskaluk. So for men, 
we would change it in cases. So it's if, a, if it's a man, it would be без маскалюка uh, or с маскалюком. So here we would. Uh, but if it's, for example, Natalia Maskaluk, we would say we would not change it. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Each, let's say, Grigoro, Grigorovich. I think there was a character like that in Harry, Harry Potter or something. Grigorovich. Grigorovich. So some uh, endings that are not in and of, they are pretty common in Russian too. So don't be surprised when you see them. Now let's talk a little bit about patronymics. Here is just the random funny uh, picture from the internet. It's a joke. I guess there was a typo. So instead of Anastasia, her name here is Anastasisa. Sisa is the slang word for boobs in Russian. So that's... Uh, uh, that's poor girl. Her name is Anna Boob. So, uh, patronymics. It's not something ancient. This is actually what we do use today, every day, if we are in an official situation. So, let's take my name. Daria Sergeyevna. This is my full name. Uh, literally, it means Daria, son, uh, a daughter of Sergei. So, yes, we take our father's name and we use it. Uh, when do we use it? Only in some official circumstances. For example, this is the passport. On your screen, this is a passport. So, in all official documents, driver's licenses, medical documents, educational certificates, everything, um, you will see the full name. Familia, имя, отчество. Last name, first name, patronymics. Um, when we use it in speaking, in official situation, again, for example, somebody is older than you or you don't know someone at all, you see them for the first time, or somebody's higher in some, I don't know, work hierarchy, some boss of yours, depends on your relationship, of course. Uh, so basically, this is the equivalent uh, for English respectful version, like Miss or Mrs. someone, or Mr. Jones, let's say, Mr. Jones. In Russian, we don't use our uh, last names for that. This is when we are going to use our patronymic to show some respect to that person. So, Daria Sergeyevna, don't be surprised if you study Russian and your teacher will introduce themselves as uh, Daria Sergeyevna. So, it's very, very common. Um, let's look at some example. Let's imagine that we have uh, uh, Victor, Victor, and his dad is, uh, let's say, Ivan. So, Victor is the son of Ivan. So, to create a patronymic, we end this. Ivanovich, Viktor Ivanovich, or Dmitri. Whoops. Let's say his name, his dad is uh, Piotr, Peter. So we end it with Ovich, Petrovich, or Andrei, and uh, who else? Alexander, his dad is Alexandrovich, Andrei Alexandrovich. With women, we already have this Daria Sergeyevna. Let's say Anna is the daughter of Alek, Alek, Anna Alegovna. Anna Alegovna. Remember, I told you there are so many jokes about this Govna ending. Everybody who has this patronymic, because it's translated as shit. 
it's a bad word in Russian. So yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I, I'm not supposed to say that. Okay. So let's say Olga. Um, who? Who? Some name. Some name. Male name. I don't know. Grigo. Grigori. Sometimes we have to change this ending. So, Grigorievna. Grigorievna. Or like here, Dmitrievna. Dmitrievna. It's from the name Dmitri. So, it means that this Anastasia has a father whose name is Dmitri. Dmitri. So, she is Anastasia, the daughter of Dmitri. Dmitrievna. If you're familiar with all those changes and endings in Russian, that soft goes to soft, hard goes to hard, this wouldn't be a surprise to you. So, these are patronymics. Now you know when to use them and uh, uh, how to form them. And uh, I hope you'll be able to uh, differentiate them from, from the last names. Now let's talk about our favorite things. Nicknames. Nicknames. In Russia, it's a nightmare because each and every name can be turned into hundreds of other names. And for Russians, it's very obvious for English speakers and from people from other countries, it's usually very, very confusing, especially when it comes to reading classic Russian literature like Dostoevsky, Tolstoy. And there comes a character whose name is Alexander, but suddenly his uh, mom appears and calls him Sashinka. Uh, then his girlfriend comes and calls him Sashulik. And then somebody calls him Shura, Shurik, Sashka, Sasha. And it's all the same person. It's all the same person. So, uh, it's nothing too special if you think about the idea of it. Like, so let, let's take the word Robert. Yeah, you can say Rob, you can say Bob. So it's just the shortened, changed version of um, of the same word. Or like Michael, Michael. It's pretty rare to say Michael. Yeah, you can say Mike. Somebody might say Mickey or Mikey. So a little bit of a change. So the idea itself is not new. However, Russian names sometimes don't make sense. Like this is the very common uh, everyday version of the name Alexander. So if you know some Alexander in real life, almost nobody will call him Alexander. Usually it's Sasha. Uh, also, oh, I think our... Where is the picture? The picture disappeared for some reason. I returned him. So this is the very popular character from a Russian Soviet movie, Operacja U, and his name there is Shurik. Shurik, and he is actually Al Alexander. But Shurik is just a funny, very, um, like very friendly or something way to say it. Some people are named Shura. Shura. This is another version of Alexander. Let me actually uh, put them not in bold. So you see that this, this is the main name, the official name. Also, some simple one among close friends, among family. It can be uh, used as Sashka. Sashka. Very dear uh, version, like endearing. Sashula. That would be like dear Alexander. Dear Alexander. My my dear Alexander. Sashula. Sashula. Or to small children. To small children. Sashula. If uh, you want to like emphasize how like, big, not even physically, but like impressive. Sashishe. Nu Sashishe. Ty maladiets. Well, that's an amazing job, Alexander. Sashishe. <laughs> no. 
there is some crazy Sashu Sashundil. It's for for friends. So God knows what you can create. It can be anything. Let's take my name as an example. Daria. A lot of people call me Daria. By the way, it is spelled with a soft sign. It's not Daria. Nope. So the most common name, 99% of people would call me Dasha in everyday life. If it's somebody really close, like my girlfriends, uh, who I have been together with since school, Dashka. My dad calls me Dashula. My grandpa used to call me Dashutyan. God knows where it comes from. Dashutyan. Dashenika. Very common name. Again, very dear if you really like the person. Dashinka. So a lot of versions. There literally can be dozens of them and it's all up to your creativity. Uh, so yeah, the, unfortunately for foreigners, this little pyramid here <laughs> shows that Russian nicknames, they can be pretty confusing. Just remember that each and every name can have uh, different versions and don't be surprised. So usually the person introduces themselves the way they expect you to address them. So if somebody says, I am Darya Sergeyevna, using both names, first name and patronymic, it means you should call them like that. They expect you to address them with this name. If somebody says, Ya Dasha, it means that they expect you to call them Dasha. So just listen what the person says and uh, and you'll be all right. Sorry, I had to take a little break and now we are back uh, to talk about what happens with the name after marriage. Here's an example of a common uh, br uh, marriage certificate. In Russian, it's свидетельство о заключении брака. So we see that husband's name, last name, is Tsvitkov. It's his last name. His first name is Andrei. And his uh, patronymic is Germanovich. It means that his father's name is German. Remember how we form patronymics. Her name, as we can see here, Osipova. Victoria, it's completely random, I found it on Google. Victoria Alexandrovna, Ooh. Victoria Alexandrovna. So it means her dad was Alexander, Alexander. And here on the picture, you see uh, here closer to the bottom, Tsvitkov, Tsvitkova. It says, after this marriage, uh, a husband and a wife will have these names. So you see, her last name is not Osipova anymore. It's Tsvitkova. So it's his last name, Tsvitkov. But because she's a woman, it is Tsvitkova. Sometimes it's not very common. Uh, a husband can take his wife's name. I don't know anyone who did that, but I know that uh, it's um, it, it can be done. Sometimes uh, women can keep both last names. So she would be Tsvitkova dash Osipova. Tsvitkova Osipova. Is it common to keep your maiden name? Yes, it is. And uh, today more than ever before. Because uh, today, um, just because it really takes a lot of time to change all your documents, all this bureaucracy. So a lot of women just prefer to keep their old name just because they don't want to go through all this bureaucratic <laughs> nightmare. Um, so, yeah, basically, just like in many other countries, uh, there are three 
options. You can keep your own last name, you can change your name and take your spouse's name, or you can have both divided in a little dash, like here, Tsvitkova, Osipova. Now about traditional Russian names, meaning old Slavic names. Today, it is interesting, they're becoming more and more popular. A lot of Russian male names, and actually female names too, will end on the word Slav, which is not surprising, right? Slavic people will end on the Slav. And for female, guess what happens with the Slav? Obviously, you just add a Slava. Uh, it's not the only option, of course, but it is very common. Miraslav. Sviata Slav, uh, or sometimes Vyacheslav. Very common names: Vyacheslav, Mstislav. These are the names of ancient Russian prince, princess, princess. Not the princess as a girl, princess as the plural prince. Not sure about my pronunciation. Oh, uh, I even heard Borislav. And uh, these names become more and more, more popular these days. So, uh, if you want to give your baby a Slavic name, you can use these. Very interesting name is Svetlana, light, Svet, Svetlana, Lubava, Lubava, Miroslava. My best friend has a daughter. She named her Miroslava. So these are all the uh, Russian names. You asked me about unusual names. Uh, so they will probably not look unusual to you at all, uh, but I will translate them to you. So it's since 1998, there is a list of names uh, that were a little bit funny. For example, Double name, Dmitri Amitist. Amitist, it's like that stone, Amitist. Matvei Raduga, Matvei Rainbow. So double name, his name is Rainbow. Nikolai Nikita Nil. Triple name, Nikolai Nikita. Graf, sounds more like a dog name in Russian. It's a very common dog name. By the way, I should make a video about common Russian names for dogs. It means count, count, like Count Monte Cristo. Dar means gift. Can you imagine naming your son gift? Uh, Ivan Kalavrat, Mirkuri. Somebody might be really into space or maybe into ancient Rome. Mer Mercury. Um, Kantagor Yegor. Mart as March. Knyaz means prince. Actually, prince, you see here. Uh, space. Angel. Angel. Wind. Veter. Veter Ivanovich. Wind, son of Ivan. <laughs> Let's say. Dolphin. How about that name? Dolphin. Summerset Ocean. Can you imagine Russian person uh, like that? Oh, oh here is the, an example of this old name style. Uh, Agony uh, or, or Ogn in Russian. Old Russian is fire. Ognislav. So it's this fire. Buddha. Poor Siddhartha is in Russia now. <laughs> Buddha Alexander. Master, Gospodin, Gospodin. What about girls? Girls, let's. Uh, um, boom, boom, how to do it? How to? Let's do it like that. Okay. Uh, double name, Polina, Polina. One Polina is not enough. It's the same as I would have been Daria, Daria. Cool. Or triple Daria, Daria, Daria. Goluba, no idea. April, but in Russian the word April is masculine. April, on. So April, it's literally he. <laughs> and yeah, somebody called their daughter like that. Cherry, Vishnya. India, I like a country. 
Принцесса Даниэлла. Oh, somebody called their daughter Russia. So, if there is some true fan of Russia and Russian culture, here is the idea of how to name your daughter. Okay. Another dolphin, the female dolphin. We had a dolphin guy somewhere here. Delphine, where was he? Delphin. And we also can add a, and it turns a female dolphin. Okay, Delphina. Somebody called the daughter Fox. So you see, you see, Sofia Solnushka, Sofia Little Sun, Little Sunshine. That's that's the strange names that some of the Russian parents uh, tried to name their children. And there is nothing wrong with this. So this will work. These names were actually registered. So sometimes, I remember there was some scandal that somebody wanted to name their child something like that, just some random numbers. And I think uh, it was prohibited. Uh, they refused to register a person like this. So poor Elon Musk wouldn't find any success if he, uh, if he were in Russia. So yeah, those are strange names. Another question you asked me, do Russian names have uh, meanings? For example, let's take the name Lyubov. This is a pretty common name. The short version would be Luba. For example, I have an aunt. Her name is Luba. It means love. You probably know it already. Another, they actually usually go together. Vera means faith. And uh, Nadezhda. Wow. Nadezhda. Uh, it means hope. Hope. So some names literally mean something. Or like Miroslav. By the way, don't don't mind me using all capital letters or some. It, it's just yeah. Normally names are only one capital letter. I don't know. I'm just used to do it for people to be able to see better. Miroslav, or the short version would be Mir. It can mean world or peace. It's the same same word in Russian. So war and peace in Russian would be Vaina i Mir, but also it means the world. Uh, oh, I don't think you see it because of my, yeah, my face is covering it. Uh, as for the last names, for example, I remember when I was four years old, I had a first love in my kindergarten. I wonder what he's doing now, like 30 years <laughs> later, 30 years later. So you see, I, I remember when I was four, I was thinking, one day I'm going to marry this guy and I will take his last name and it will be so amazing because it means beautiful. You probably know the adjective красивый, красивый, beautiful. So this cross, cross, it's, it doesn't directly mean beautiful, but красавин, I thought it was so gorgeous. Ah, he probably drank himself to death or something. I don't even want to find out what he's doing today, but whatever. So um, let's take somebody famous, Tolstoy. What's wrong with me today? Tolstoy, the writer, Leo Tolstoy. A lot of people think that it means big, thick, fat, because we have the adjective uh, Tolstoy, Tolstoy, plump, big, Tolstoy. But no, you see, it's uh, like that. But if it's a woman, Natalia Tolstaya, here this A ah would be stressed. So if it's an adjective, it would have been Tolstaya, big. But the last name is usually Tolstaya, Tolstaya. So of course, it doesn't mean that the person is big, right? Okay, uh, so some names do do have meanings. They come from some words from the uh, from the language, 
For example, my last name Malchanova comes from the verb Malchat. Malchat means to be quiet, to be silent. So at every celebration, like somebody's wedding, somebody's big birthday with the showman uh, yelling in the microphone, the toast would always be somehow playing around with this. Like, this time they will not be quiet. This time they are ready to talk. And they give you the microphone to say some toast to the... So, yeah, I've heard it like 10 times on different celebrations. They can't can't leave uh, our last name alone. Malchat, Malchanov. So, yeah, some, uh, some names and last names especially, they do have some kind of a connection to some real words. But it doesn't mean anything, actually. So, it's just a last name. And finally, you asked me if we have some names that can work both for boys and for girls. One of them is Alexander. Alexander. Uh, and guess how to turn it into the female version. Yes, Alexandra. But they both will be Sasha. Sasha. So you can name your son or daughter Alexander. Also, also, Yevgeny. I think in English it would be Eugen Yevgenia. The short name for both would be Zhenya. Zhenya. Valentin. Valentine. This is not a very common uh, name for guys. So, uh, I know only one person in my entire life whose name is Valentin. The short version would be Vala. Vala. Some names are kind of close, but it's not the same name. And they come from Scandinavia. Alek i Olga. Alek i Olga. So, yeah, we do have uh, these names that work both for, for boys and girls. And finally, about the most popular names in Russia in, uh, I think it's the last year, 2020. Number one, it's always Alexander and Sophia. Speaking of the names that can work both for uh, different, not both, I mean for many countries. I think everywhere in the world you can meet Alexander and you can meet Sophia or like Sonia. So, Russia is no exception. Two most popular names. Then, for boys, popular names were Mark, Lev, Matvey. For girls, Miroslava, Mia, Amelia, Agata, Ariana. So, you see, it's not, not those names that we are used to, like Natasha, Dasha, Katya. Catherine. No. So, names are changing. And number three, Mikhail. This is how I'm going to name my baby now. In a couple of months, he's coming. So, Mikhail, Michael. Maxim, kind of international name to Artyom with your Mark. Double Mark. What's going on? We have Mark here. And Ivan. Vanya. And girls' names Maria, Anna, Alisa, Victoria, Polina. These are more or less traditional. I remember the name Polina and Victoria in my generation. It was kind of rare, so it was not popular at all. So this was the intro into Russian names. I will be really happy if you share some stories in the comments. For example, uh, how you experienced uh, all that craziness with patronymics or those nicknames. Maybe you have some funny stories to share how you first met it in, in real life. Or if you know some interest in Russian names or some interest in names from your country. Or you can say what your name means in your language. That would be really interesting. So, uh, see you in the comments. Let's, let's share, share something exciting there. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I really hope to see you on my channel again. Bye-bye.